It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. God is marvelous. Yes, sir. And, uh, and, and he said, he said, in the day that you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. See, when, when he saves people, from the beginning, God had purpose for Adam, Eve. He had purpose for all those men that he called out, that he saved. He had purpose for, for Abraham when he called them out from among the, the, the Chaldeans, Chaldeans, however you want to say it. He had purpose for his life. They had purpose for Isaac, Jacob, and on down through the line. Well, Jesus wasn't born of a man, but he, God let him come through that line yes, out of the tribe of Judah. God has purpose for everybody that he saves. And even when the, the Hebrews were, were captive, man, when they were caught up in Egypt, slaves of the evil pharaohs and all. God told Moses, he said, now you go, you tell Pharaoh to let my people go, let, let my, my son, let, let him go. Let Jacob go that he may serve me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That he may serve me. So God calls us to service. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and it's, it's not just about, and it's good, he, well, the Bible teaches us to, and let's, let's get there. We'll read that, that scripture in Hebrews, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. We, saints of God, are, are called for service. When God saves you, and you can, people make all kinds of analogies and comparisons and, uh, about the church and about saints and who they are and, and, and what happens when they're saved. You know, we are part of one body. We are a part of each other. God saves nobody. It's like going to a football game. You got the spectators and you have the team. No, God saves nobody. And think about, if you want to look at it like that, about God's team, is that he doesn't call anybody just to sit on the bench. Even as, as, as you're being prepared for, for other things or, or greater things or ministries of, of different sorts and different areas of service, even as you, you're being prepared, you're not sitting on the bench. 
And that's why the, the Bible teaches, teaches us as being a part of the body of Christ, we can't say to each other, the, 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 the I can't say to the hand, I have no need of thee. The foot can't say, we, we can't say that we don't need each other. Nor can we look at ourselves as though we're not a necessary part of the body. Like we're not, we're not, imp we're not needful. Everybody that God saves has a purpose. Yes, sir. And most definitely, we do, we say it all the time, we need each other. Yes, sir. There's no doubt. Yes. We're a part of each other. And in God said, you look at how he, when, when he called, uh, uh, when he chose the disciples, when he called them in to learn from him, he was, he was their, their, their master, their rabbi. And they eventually recognized that he definitely was the son of God. He was the Messiah. He was the Christ. He was their teacher. But he called them all. Matthew, the tax collector, Luke, the physician, Peter, the fisherman, and others. All different walks of life. And later on, after Judas hung himself because he, he was chosen for that purpose, and keep that in mind, Judas was chosen to betray. And Jesus spoke of him. He said, I've chosen you 12, and one of you is the devil. He said that. And Judas was later referred to as the son of perdition, son of destruction, son of hell, son of, son of Satan. And after that, I, I think they, they put it in the hands of God. And was it Matthias who was chosen to take a part of the ministry? But God called Paul. He chose, now Matthew's did, he, and he participated, but God chose Paul as an apostle and, and sent him forth to minister. And that's what an apostle is, once sent forth. Of course, in order to be sent forth, you have to be called in and sent out. So we all have purpose, and that's, that's one thing that we should never take for granted. All of those men had purpose. All the disciples, we all have purpose. We, we, we're all called for a reason. And it's important, let's, let's do this first, Hebrews. Let's get Hebrews 10, let's go here to the 22nd verse. Yes, sir. The Brooklyn. Yeah. And everybody take your Bibles, read with us. Jesus is the high priest. We're, we're called into the priesthood. Priesthood of God, the royal priesthood. Yes, sir. We're, that's, that's who we are. That's who God has made us. God has made us yes, more than conquerors yes, through him that loved us. Yes, that's, that's the Bible. That's the book. That's who we are. And most times when, when we think about, when we talk about who we are, we envision who we are I hate to say it, but we do. In the old man, sometimes we don't even acknowledge the, the new creature that we are. Yes, sir. And see who we are. And, 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 and with the work ongoing in our lives, with the work of God, just, just ever more in, in progress. Yes, sir. People can't envision who God wants them to be who they are to become. Praise God. You're the work of God. If you've been saved, you are the work of God. The Bible lets us know that according to Corinthians, read it a, a thousand times, you've heard it a thousand times, I have, that we've been bought with a price. We are the possession of God. We've been made the righteousness of God. Now I know some of us are, we're a little, sometimes, you know, humans can get a little vain. Some of us ha have our little knickknacks and li little things, little trophies and little dishes that we just like to sit around and look at because they're pretty, you know. 
because it's an antique or, or, or some rare form of something. So we, we sit it on the shelf. That's not the way God operates. We are precious in his sight. But he puts, now you can be put on the shelf. That's, that's a different message. If you don't perform in what God gives, if you've been saved, not only will you, will you be put on the shelf, the pants are getting whipped off of you. Being a son, a daughter of God. But God doesn't save anybody just to admire them. Come on now. Nobody. God demands praise from us. He, he's deserving. He's worthy. God wants our, our, our admiration of him. So he calls nobody to be a spectator. He calls no, no one into ministry, into salvation, just to sit down. Say, so I came to church, I showed up. Now, he wants us to, so we're going we're gonna to read that. So I showed up for, for church service, so, so God ought to be pleased with my presence. We come here to fellowship with each other, to yes. fellowship with the Spirit of God, and to inquire of God's Word. Yes, That's why we're here to learn yes, sir. and to fellowship with Him. Yes, sir. And to fellowship with each other. Okay. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Yes. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And our bodies washed with pure water. Go ahead. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Without wavering. Let us hold fast. What is the profession of our faith? The whole mystery of the faith is, is tied up in Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How that God, <laughs> he visited this place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the person of his son, through his son. That's why the Bible says he was in the world and the world was made, made by him. But they, and they didn't even know, people didn't recognize him. The word of God showed himself. He, the glory of God walked on this planet in the person of Jesus. So the whole mystery of the, everything about the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, it, about God is wrapped up in Jesus. The Bible speaks of him as being the son of God, the word of God, the wisdom of God. He's God. God incarnate, not, not the flesh. The flesh was born as the son. And God encamped in the flesh of his son. The flesh was the lamb. He was the sacrifice so that we could be redeemed back to God. For God so loved the world. He just, he just loved us. So he's already predestined. He's already foreordained some to salvation. He's already chosen. And when the time came, that was before the foundation of the world. He'd already, God's already set it up, already planned it. And when the time came, he saved those He'd already chosen. Yes, sir. And he doesn't save them just to, what do you call those little cabinets that you, you have for just special little knickknacks? <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, the curios. He didn't, he didn't save us to sit us in his curio. And look at us. And admire us. We're going to be admired on the stage of eternity. Well, it won't be us that's being admired, but it's going to be the work of God. This, on the stage of eternity. Yes, it's, it's all in this book. Yes, well, people are going to see what God has done. What God has made from nothing. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yes, sir. From sinners to saints. Praise God. Yes, Praise God. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm telling you. He's, so, and he's going to show us off. We're going to be showcased. But right now, we're not, we're not in the curio, saints. No. We're the work of God. The profession of our faith, what we believe 
about who we are in Christ Jesus. First of all, what we believed about Jesus. That never changes. And we should hold fast to that. You know, that, that first love, you know, oh man. And some people do need to return to their first love. Yes, sir. Where, where something is always constantly, you know, gnawing at, at, at their faith, at their, their, their love of God, their enthusiasm for God. Take it, wanting to take the place of Jesus. I, I love ice cream. I do. I, I'll be honest with you. You can tell. <laughs> but no matter what, no matter how many different kinds there are, no matter how many different flavors there are, I love, just give me some straight up plain old vanilla ice cream. Nothing, no other flavor, can move me from that. I love vanilla ice cream. I might, you know, eat some, they got all kinds, of blue, blueberry, blueberry pudding, chocolate raisin pudding with cookies, all kinds, okay, they have all kinds. You know. But I love vanilla. Nothing or nobody should be able to move us or move our love in any way, from Jesus. And we're to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Go ahead, read. Just, just read. For he is faithful that promise. Yes, he is. And let us consider one another to provoke and to love and to good works. No, let's provoke each other to, to anger. Love. Let's provoke each other to unforgiveness. Let's provoke each other to, to, to doubting and negativity. Let's encourage each other to be negative. Lord have mercy. Uh, I guess if anybody could have said this, it, it should have been Job. Because things were just happening in that man's life just back to back. Tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. And, and God knows. He, he looks at our hearts. He comforts our hearts because he, he understands when we do. Because we, we have tragedies. It, tragedies hurt, man. And God knows it. And he doesn't leave us. He leaves us in the times of our, our losses, our tragedies, our hurts, what, whatever. He doesn't leave us. And this man Job, though, he said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We might have a flat tire, a run out of sugar, and behind something like that. And it sort of gets me to hear when just a little something happens, to hear somebody say, Lord, when it rains, it pours. It's just one thing after another. That is so negative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're, not, we're, not to, we're not to exude that kind of, you know, we're not to have that kind of atmosphere about ourselves. We're, we're, we're not to live like that in negativity. I'm just too tired to do. No, no. I, people get tired, yes. I'm just too tired to participate. And it's funny. How that most, if people want to have something to do, if they something they, they want to do, even if it's work sometimes, no, I'm, I'm not talking about like a job. Wash the car, anything. People will pick church time. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. Had all week. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's true. I'm just so worn out. Why didn't you tell the boss man you were worn out? I need to stay home. And I, I need to trim the hair, just cut the. No. So we're to have this confidence in Jesus. We're, we're to know who we are in Christ Jesus, to know that He is our solid rock, our faith. He, everything is about Him, on Him, in Him. Everything is wrapped up in, in Christ. So 
we are to consider each other and provoke each other, to encourage each other, and to love and good works, and, and we're going to let this go right here, go ahead. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Now, can you tell me what that means? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. What does that mean? You don't miss. You don't miss the times when, and it's not called out, it's the same thing that we're going to read here in a minute. But when the, the, the saints of God get together, you just don't miss. Yes, sir. Just because I don't feel like getting out of bed. I think I'll pick this day. No, you, don't, you don't do that. Not forsaking. And, and we'll forsake what we say we believe before we forsake anything else. And most of this, that's what happens. And it's funny, even in times of trouble, when, when people run into a, a rough spot, a hard time, a trial, something does hit them, just about knocks them off their feet, the, the first thing out the window is their faith in Jesus. Their faith in God. That's the truth. The first thing, not just the assembling of, of, of themselves together, but the trust. Tragedy happens, and immediately people go from praise the Lord to, oh, woe is me. Come on now. Yes, sir. We forget about who's got us. <laughs> God's got us, folks. He's got us. We forget about his word and what he says. Brother, let's, let's read. Yes, sir. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. That's a habit of some, as some people is. That's, that's a habit that some people have. But exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. That's, that's good. To encourage one another. We are to encourage each other. And the closer we get to the end, the more we should encourage. The closer we, 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 we see, we know we're closer, that much closer. Any time, any day, the rapture can take place. We should encourage each other. Amen. Not discourage. Amen. We understand each other. We, are, we understand. I understand. Tragedy, I understand when people lose. I understand when people are going through. We understand. And we try to encourage it and let people know that, okay, we understand, whatever. But when it comes down to people with that attitude, oh, I'm just, just ain't nothing going right. Not people do. Oh, it seems like nothing's going right. Instead of encouraging, some people will, 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 will jump right in there with them. Honey, I know what you mean. You know? They get, they, they, yes, sir. You know? And the pity party is on. Don't ever look for me to join in with you in your pity party. I, I, would not, I can't do that. I'll understand if, if you're going through a hard, I'll, I'll do I mean, most of us do, most people do. And they'll give you that, they'll give you that shoulder, they'll, they'll, they'll give you that hand to, to help lift you up. But to join in with that negativity, don't look for that. Who do we believe? So the Bible says that we're not, oh, oh I got to say that, because that's, that's another one. It just came to mind. I guess God just reminded me. Some people will even, and who's going to get you through your trials? Who's going to get you through your darkest days? Tell me about it. And there are some things that nobody can get you through but the Almighty himself. That's the truth. Nobody can get you through but God. I've heard people say, I gotta say it. Well, I wasn't to church the other day because I was going through a little something. That's when you need to be at church. You need to be there anyway. I was going through something. Everybody goes through something. Everybody does. 
You look at people, but some people, you look at them and you can't tell. You wouldn't believe that. You would think that some people just never have trials. They never go through anything. But some people, you look and, and, and you, you never would believe that they do. Because they believe God. And they know who's got them. They know who's got them. And they, they, they will consider this. They'll consider his word, what he said. No, this is going to pass. And they, and they will. They'll get through it. God will bless them. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is. So this is what used to happen. Read this right quick. Exodus 19. Okay. And starting with the third verse. And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I've done. I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings Hallelujah. and brought you unto yourself, unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, listen, listen, go ahead, read it, and keep my covenant. Thank you, Father. Then ye shall be a peculiar, peculiar treasure unto me Hallelujah. above all the people, for all the earth is mine. And he chose them. Isn't yes, that something? Yes, sir. All flesh is God's, but he chose them as his chosen. And in the ninth verse, we're going to sort of skip around yes, in here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. Hallelujah. And Moses they didn't. They didn't. Many of them didn't. Go, go ahead, read it. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, mm -hmm. and let them wash their clothes. Let them wash their clothes, clean up, separate themselves from everything, and get ready to meet me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'll come and talk to them. Yes, sir. <laughs> They don't want to hear what you say. Okay, I, I, I will come and talk to them. We'll see if we can, you know. He <laughs> said, I'll see if they listen. I, I, I said, don't worry about it. I'll talk to them. Yes, sir. So he did. And, and be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves. Yes, set up a perimeter and don't pass these boundaries. God's coming down on this mountain. God's going to touch it. He's, he's going to descend on this mountain. So don't pass these boundaries. If you do, you'll die. Go ahead, read it. Take heed to yourselves that you go not into mm -hmm. the mountain, unto the mount. Or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. Put to death, whether it's man or beast or, or whatever. Yes, sir. And in the 16th verse, brother. And it came to pass the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightning. Yes, yes. And yes. a thick cloud upon the mount. Maybe that's what they wanted to hear. <laughs> Maybe that's what Brother Naaman wanted to see. When he got his healing of, from leprosy, he wanted to see some action. People think they want to see God in action like that. Not when he's talking to you, you don't. You don't see that. No. No, no, no. Thunders, lightnings, earthquakes. All set up in this, this, this one area. And? And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Uh huh. And Moses brought forth. The so, people. God, so, what we're getting at is this was like a holy convocation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Called all the people. And there, and there are other tags. Yes, 
in biblical history where God has called for holy convocations, and that's for everybody to come out. It wasn't like, well, if, 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 you, if you have time, if you're not washing your chariot or your car today, if you're not over, over at uh, Jimmy John's house, you know, working for him, no, you come, you don't, for, you don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. You know, now God's not telling us not to go out of town, not to travel, not to, well, he's not, he's not saying any of that. That's not, but some people, the first thing to go in their lives when, when, when anything has to be turned loose is God. That's the sad part. Yes, when anything, he said, man, we'll, we'll go to work. Hurting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sneezing, sick. Yes, sir. So sick, people have to make you go home. Tired, up all night, but at work, bright and early. But we'll never tell Brother Boss. I don't feel too good today. We'll never call him and say, I think I'm gonna take off. I don't feel too good. I don't feel like coming. I, I'm gonna stay home and wash my car. Come on. No, sir. <laughs> so God expects certain things that he expects. For one thing, one thing love, trust. He expects us to obey him, for sure. And our trust is reflected in the way we obey God. That, that, that's, that's good, brother. Anyway, God, these, these people were, were terrified. Yes, sir. He said, oh, he said Moses, get, get on down there, because these people are going to, some of them are going to have the nerve to try to break through and see what's going on up here. And they would have to be killed. And if, well, if they broke through that, they would, he would probably kill them. We're called for purpose. One day, and the book teaches us, well, Jesus taught about it in St. Matthew, I think around the seventh chapter. Judge not that you be not judged. Don't spend your time judging each other. Why do people do that? Don't spend your time gossiping and backbiting. The book talks about that you know, even in the Old Testament. She'll not go up and down as a tail bearer among people. Why? Why? Because we're part of each other. And no one brother or sister is better than the other. If a brother or sister is overtaken in a fault, if, they's, if, if, if they've run into something that, 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 that just knocked them, some sin, some wrong, that knocked them off their feet, Ye which are spiritual, don't degrade that person. Don't go around putting that, that, that person's business in the street. Amen. Don't do that. Amen. Ye which are spiritual, do what? Restore. Restore that brother or sister. Yeah, not with like being a, a lord over them or, 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 or better than them. Do you know those kind of people... Irritate God. Yeah, it's in, it's in, that's in the Bible. People who think they're holier, and, and, they're, and some people, that's in the book. People who say, don't come near, don't do that to me. And some folks are just about to tell you. For I am holier than thou. God said those folks are what? A smoke in his nose. They're an irritant to God. So we're not to do that to each other. We need each other, we're part of each other. And we're called not as each other's judge. The, the Romans tells us about that. Who are we who are down to judge who? Another man's servant. Come on. God wants us to live amongst each other, to live with each other as one, and to live with each other in truth, in the love of God. That's it. Forgiving each other, you know? Yes, sir. Even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave us. Yes, sir. The, the Bible teaches us all about it yes, and to move forward. And we're not to uh, try to abuse grace. Yes, 
doesn't mean we're, we're to take advantage of other people's forgiveness or other people's favor and use it against them just to get what we want out of them. God forbid. Nope. So let's, let's read the, let's go to Corinthians, I believe it is. Let's see. About the fifth chapter. The ninth verse. Wherefore we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So I thought that God accepted us when we got saved. Sure he did. He chose us before the foundation of the world. He called us, saved us. So we are accepted as his children, as the sons of God. We, we, we accept it. But the, thing, the way we live, the things that we do, Paul said we labor. We don't sit idle. No believer should be idle. Yes, of course, people need time. God gives you time to rest. He wants us all to have that. He gives us time to, to live and enjoy uh, th this planet, to enjoy the goodness and grace of God, to enjoy the fruit of our labor. He gives us all that. Ecclesiastes teaches us that. But we are not to be slothful, lazy people. All of us have, we, we've been called, chosen, if you've been called, if you've been called, if you've been chosen for the purpose of God. The book of Romans, and sometimes we, we, we that's one of my favorites, I have to admit that, that's, that's one of my favorite scriptures. It, it talks about how that all things, no matter what they are, good and bad, Bad occurrences in our lives. All things work together for what? For good. That's the truth. For good to a certain group of people. To who? Whom? To work together for good. To, for those who love God. Who love him. And those who are the what? called according to his purpose. God has purpose for us. If you've been chosen, if, if, if the love of God has, has shined on you by way of salvation, if God's love, has, if you've received his love, you can't help but love him back. And when you do, if, if you love God, he's, he, he will make everything, no matter what it is. Bad experiences in your life, God, God will, will take that and turn it into glory for him. He'll do it. All things work together for good to them who love God, to them, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And that's the main thing you have to understand is God most definitely has a purpose. He has a, we, 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 we think we know what we want to do in life. And we know some of us, we have aspirations, we have dreams, we have hopes things we want to do, and we look for it. We try to search it out. We try to lay it out and fix it up. We have purpose. God has purpose. We are not curio cabinet children. We've not been called to be spectators at, at, at the game. We, we're, we're not called and put on this team to to, 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 to warm the bench. We are participants. We have purpose. All of us. There's no doubt. And he tells us here, that's what Paul said, we say, we labor. We're involved. Who was it? Was it John or somebody? Or was that Paul? Or James, somebody. He said, show me your, your faith without your works, which you cannot do that. And I'll show you my faith by my works. I'll show you how much I believe by what I do. And that's what it's about. It's, it's, it's about being an operational participant in the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. And everybody has something they can do. 
Everybody has something, one way or the other. Every limb of the body is to serve a purpose. Every joint is for something. Every organ is for something. Praise God. Let's, let's, let's read, brother. Yes, sir. Wherefore we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Of, of him. Yes, Don't worry about judging each other. Don't worry about what everybody else is. Don't worry about what, what other people think. Now, of course, we, we say we don't care, but in a sense, in a way, we do. But when it comes down to doing what God wants you to do, don't worry, not, uh, uh, concern yourself, not one iota about what other people think about you. Amen. You do what you know is right in the sight of God. And where, the, and, and where that intelligence, where that wisdom is going to come from, is right here. If you please God, you're all right with everybody else who loves him. You don't have to worry about what people think. If you please God, you don't have to be concerned. I wonder what Pastor says. You have to be concerned about that. You please God, man, I'm, I'm overjoyed. It's all about God, everything is about God. It's not about eye service and, and man pleasing. It's not about that. And what Paul, the way he labored, it wasn't trying to, uh, it wasn't in competition with, with it, but he, he said it. I wasn't uh, just, I wasn't a, a whip behind the chiefest of the apostles. So I went all in. But he wasn't in competition with them. It wasn't about competition. It wasn't about trying to outdo or be better than. It wasn't looking, it wasn't about that. It was about pleasing God. What I believe is what I do. That's what, that's what he's saying here. It's all about God for this purpose. Because, and this, it's going to come down to this. For everybody, every single person in here, everybody who's named the name of the Lord Jesus, what's going to happen? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us. All of us. Paul said uh, another time, I think it was Paul, who, who said, judge nothing before the time. Amen. Amen. We're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Th this, this judgment seat, who's going to be nobody but believers. This is a judgment seat solely and strictly for people who have been saved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did you do with my time? Yes, sir. What did you do with the gift of the ability that I gave you? What did you do with the office of the ministry I placed in your hands? What did you do? What was it all about? Come on now. We're going to face God. God's ministry is, is not church. You know what I mean? It's, it's not that. Just church. Just religion. It's not that. It's from him, of him, by him, about him. It's all about God. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That all, yes, that sir. what? That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or Praise bad. Praise God Almighty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whether it be good or bad, all of us. Yes, there is nothing hidden that will not come to light. Come on. Yes, sir. Good and bad. Secret bad, secret good, everything. Our most secret faults, our motive for our actions, whether it's pride or whatever, or, or, or separate, whatever it is. 
doing good to get good, doing something to get favor, everything is going to be exposed. Like those screens, those screens up there. It's going to be a bigger one than that. Even our thoughts, man. God's going to expose everything about us. Praise God. Ain't that lovely? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it is, because if you get there, that means that you've been caught away. If you get there, You don't get there without having been saved. Not being a church member or spectator. You can be in here and be a church goer. Like a big old jumbotron. Praise God. It's going to do the instant replay on everybody. Me, everybody. Even our motives are going to be exposed. Everything. Motive for doing good. That everything's going to be exposed. Our actions. Everything. Who we, who we really are. But I'm looking forward to eternity with Jesus. Yes, yes, sir. I'm looking forward to that. And if this be part of it, praise God. Just have mercy on us. And the Bible says, and then after all this is done. because See, that's going to be a lot of weeping. A lot of people just being ashamed. Everybody, some, Paul, Peter, all of everybody. Some sisters and women just look so holy. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, don't y'all laugh, brothers, y'all too. <laughs> Your thoughts, everything, everything is going to be just just exposed in, like in real time. Boy, that's, that's something else. Praise the Lord for his goodness. Yes, sir. Don't get quiet now. This is part of it. And then after all that, because there's been a lot of weeping, a lot of, oh God, I'm so scared. But we're going to recognize what? For sure. See, we, we, we get sort of we, we take things for granted sometimes. We get settled in, we're, we're saved, we love God, and, and we just sort of assume certain things. We know it's all about Jesus. We'll never forget that. We know it's, it's he that's made us, it's he that saved us, not we ourselves. We understand, we know that. But we're going to see the very depths of what it means to have received the grace of God yes, that I don't deserve yes, to be here by myself because of what I've done, no matter what the work was. Yes, it's your goodness, yes, your grace. Yes, oh, I'm so sorry. And then the Bible says that after all that, all that exposure, all the tears, and don't worry, I'm not going to worry about Adam or somebody looking at me or some sister. Oh, I didn't know Pastor Adam was like, hey, I'm not worried about that because you're going to be crying too. Yes, sir. You're going to be ashamed too. Yes, sir. We're going to have our little white robes on over our heads, you know. Yes, <laughs> looking like an anonymous choir. <laughs> Ashamed to show our faces. And after all that, then the Bible says, and then shall every man have what? Praise of God. Hallelujah. He's going to bless us. He's going to comfort us. And, and those who have been involved in work, he's going to, you know, going to receive crowns from him. And those crowns, of course, we're going to give them back to him. Only he is deserving. Yes, Only he's worthy. Get, get, get my other one. I got another one somewhere. Romans 14, yeah. Romans. Romans 14 and 8. All righty. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Praise God. I hope, yes, I hope you all are. Yes, sir. I hope, God. But we, you always know, you always know different. You know better. This book, I'm telling you, this is the beginning of discernment. Discernment is a gift. There's a gift of discernment. And the, the gift never contradicts God's truth. You just see it. It's right, it's, everything is right in this book. We can say a lot. It, about, yeah, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. No, this tells the story. So whether we live or die, those who are saved, we're the Lord's, we belong to God, okay. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that Thank he God. might be Lord both of the dead and living. Yes. But why doest thou judge thy brother? So why? What's the point in judging each other? Or, or what is judging anyway? You can judge, there are a couple ways you can judge. You can judge by way of assumption. Yes, sir. Yeah. Have you ever just assumed something? Just because you assumed it to you, it was true. People do that all the time. That's a sin. That's wrong. Yes, sir. And from there they go on to, to, to think within themselves what should be done about such a person. That's wrong. And the Bible, Jesus taught about that. Say, so with whatever measure you meet, it's going to be measured out to you. With whatever you think ought to happen to somebody else. That will most definitely come to haunt you. That's going to rest on your doorstep. That punishment, that penalty is going to come to your house. Why would, so don't ever forget that because it will. Might not be today, might not be tomorrow, but one way or the other, that will surely happen. And some people, without the assumption of having to assume something about somebody's life, they might know a particular fact about the person. And from there, they will pronounce penalty, judgment. You don't want to do that. And I think that's what he's talking about right here. Say, so why are you judging your brother? Don't, don't do that. Why do, why, why are you judging your brother? Say, why do you judge your brother? Why do you set at naught your brother? Why do you look down on them? Or why do you believe that you are a far better believer, a Christian, if you want to use that word, than they are? That's why young folks, please, in schools or wherever you go, don't ever ignore a saint. Life can change yes, drastically yes, in a minute. Don't take overnight. It can change in a minute for anybody. And it, it, it tells us, okay, why do you judge your brother? You go ahead and read it. But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why doest thou set at naught thy brother? Uh huh. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us. Now this, now the great white throne judgment is for whom? You, you already know. For all the lost. Everybody who's going to hell. God's a judge. He's, he's going to have court anyway. He's going to give people a chance to say, Lord, Lord, didn't I? Yeah, whatever. He's going to open the books, the Bible tells us. And if, you, if their names don't appear in the book, well, they won't be there anyway if their name was there. But he's going to open the word. He's going to open, open the, the, the book of life and some other books. As, as a book of remembrance is going to be there. Just so, so, just so many different kind of books. I don't think I know them all. But they're going to be there. The dead are going to be judged out of those things that are written in the books. And some folks are going to be in judgment there, having been a churchgoer, but never a believer. You live what you believe. Come on. What you believe is, is the motivation for your life. So they're going to be there. 
But this judgment seat of Christ is mentioned a few times in the Bible. We just read one, and here's another. Where we shall all, all believers. Yes, sir. It just got through talking about brothers. Why are you judging your brother? Yes, sir. These are people who, who are part of the family of God. Yes, sir. See, it's not over. Yes. So we don't need to judge each other. We don't need, God forbid, we don't need to condemn. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ is written. For it is written, as I live, said the Lord, mm -hmm. every knee shall bow to me. Yes. And every tongue shall confess. E even believers and, and the lost too, they're going to bow. Mm -hmm. No matter what, when, the, when their time comes. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. That's it, bro. That's good. Every one of us. Everybody. God holds all of us responsible for his time. We're living on God's time. Yes, sir. We're living, we're breathing God's breath. We own nothing. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All souls are my, everything belongs to God. You've been blessed, you're in good health. God has blessed you with that. You've been brought into relationship with God. You didn't make that happen. We're saved by grace through faith. And the Bible says even the faith. And that, what? Not of yourselves. It's a gift from God. Praise the Lord. He does it all, doesn't he? Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. And he did it for us. So since everything is his, he holds us, and he does. Every one of us, we're going to give account of us. Everybody. Nobody is exempt. I bet that's one church, that's one holy convocation. If you're saved, you're not going to miss it. You're going to have to be there. You know, people, some people get wind of something, you know, like uh, that, that scripture that says, uh, Judgment must begin at the house of God. Have a special meeting or something. Some folks used to just automatically not even show up. They, especially if they knew <laughs> that, that some of it might have been about them. You don't have the ability to miss this one. We're going to be there. If so, be that you've been born again. If you've truly been saved, you're going to be there. So what well, we know the three things, and that's in Micah, that God requires of us, and that is to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before our God. Not in arrogance and pride and with a big head, and we're better than other people, our kids are better than other folks, and you know, come on now, y'all met people like that before. Come on. And, and that's, that's true, people say that all the time. We, we, that's why we, we have no right to, to believe not for an instant that we are better, our lives, our, our, our person, that we're better than other people. We're not. Not at all. We come out of the same bucket of humanity that everybody's drawn out of. We all need God's mercy. Yes, sir. And if we don't stink too bad, it's because we've been washed. <laughs> cleansed with blood, washed in water. Yeah. But still, we're no better. We still have the odor of humanity on us. Thank God for his goodness. Think about, uh, say, say the, the parable that Jesus taught when was it? Peter, who asked him about, well, Lord, how, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I, and I forgive him to seven times. And he said, no, I say unto you, not, not seven times, but until what? Seventy times seven. You forgive him. Nothing. We want mercy 
but sometimes we don't want to show it. We want forgiveness, but we don't want to show, we don't want to forgive. You know, we want blessing, but sometimes we people don't want to be a blessing. Give God glory. Give Him glory with your life, okay? Give, give Him, give God complete glory with your life. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Praise God. Well done, good and faithful servant. You're here. The best you. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.